a microphone's form factor is how a microphone's shape adapts to its intended use. We can divide microphones in four large groups, handheld, hands-free, where we can put lavalier headset and instrument clips, installed away from surfaces like gooseneck and hanging microphones, and boundary microphones. Those are installed on surfaces. Handheld microphones are usually chosen by size, weight, and feel. They move with a source or can be set on a microphone stand, and they are ideal for standing speaker or singers. Pickup quality and level depends a lot on the user. If the user doesn't know how to handle or how to talk in front of a microphone, the microphone will not be able to correct these issues. Hands-free microphones, in the other hand, are placed directly on the person that is going to use them. Size and appearance is usually critical when choosing these microphones, as they need to be unobstructed. One advantage of hands-free microphones is that they maintain the distance to the source. So they're ideal for talkers, presenters, and singers. There's very little experience required for using these microphones. The only thing required is knowing how to place them. For installed microphones, usually appearance is very important, as these microphones are always going to be in the same place. They can be used for both standing or seating speakers in any type of application. They're ideal for boardrooms, meeting rooms, and podia. There's very little or no experience required for these type of microphones. Boundary microphones are also installed microphones, but these are mounted on surfaces. The surface is critical for proper operation and functionality of these microphones. They're visually unobtrusive, and they are ideal for boardrooms and meeting rooms. As with the installed microphones, little or no experience is required, but we need to keep in mind that placing anything close or on top of the microphone may block how the microphone can pick up signals. In general, when choosing microphones, we want microphones that have a frequency response that would cover the source's spectrum. We may also want a microphone that has a frequency response that enhances the desired frequencies and can reject some unwanted frequencies. Also, microphones should be able to withstand the maximum level. These days, microphone clipping levels are very high, so this is usually not a problem. Also, microphones should have adequate sensitivity. That is, that they should provide enough voltage to the input states that they're connected to. When placing a microphone, the most important thing is that the microphone should be as close as possible to the source while avoiding saturation or distortion. Distance should be less than the room's critical distance, but we need to consider proximity effect. In a room, we're going to have reverberation and background noise. The level of this is going to be roughly the same regardless of distance. When somebody talks in a room, Direct sound will diminish in level as we get farther from the source. At any distance from that source, the resulting signal is going to be the mix between the direct sound and the reverberation. At some point in the room, both of those signals, the direct sound and the reverberation, are going to have the same level. That is the critical distance. Beyond that point, direct sound is going to be masked by reverberation and background noise. If we place a microphone beyond the critical distance, that microphone will only pick up noise. Taking distances into consideration, the best microphone that we can pick is the headset. It's going to be the one closest to the source and the farthest from the critical distance. If this is not a possibility, the next best choice is going to be a gooseneck microphone. This microphone is going to be a little bit farther from the source, but still far from the critical distance. Pointing the microphone in the right direction is going to be critical. Next in distance is going to be the boundary microphone. It's going to be a little bit farther away than the gooseneck microphone, but if it is pointed or placed correctly, it's going to work as well. Last is going to be the hanging microphone. Hanging microphones usually end up being the farthest away from the sources. So these type of microphones are usually going to be picking up a lot of background noise in the room. In some cases, we might want to pick up multiple sources with the same microphone. This can be done as long as all the sources are equidistant to that microphone. If we place a microphone equidistant to two talkers that are sitting on a table, that microphone will properly pick up that signal. If, in the other hand, we try to place one microphone to pick up three talkers, the talker in the center is going to be much closer to that microphone. So this talker is going to sound louder than the other two. This usually is not recommended. When using multiple microphones, one thing that we want to try to avoid is multiple microphone interference. This phenomenon happens when two waveforms mix, creating a third waveform. This can happen both acoustically and electronically, and it can be prevented by verifying that all microphones have the same polarity, avoiding picking up a source with more than one microphone, avoiding early reflections, or using an automatic mixer. 
Microphone interference is also known as comb filtering, and it's that hollow sound we sometimes hear when two microphones are picking up the same source. Certain frequencies will be mixed on phase, creating constructive interference, while certain others will be mixed completely off phase, creating complete cancellation. This is destructive interference. This can happen when multiple microphones are picking up the same source at different distances or with early reflections. When we're talking in front of a microphone, sound is not only going to travel directly to the microphone, but will also be bouncing off nearby reflective surfaces. These two acoustic signals can mix at the microphone, creating comb filtering. To avoid comb filtering, we can use the 3 to 1 rule that states that the distance between two adjacent microphones should be at least three times the distance from one microphone to its intended source. We can also avoid it by using automatic mixers. Mm -hmm.